Eugene, when they say, Doc, what's the chance that this is going to work for me? You know, how, how do you kind of have that conversation? And maybe we could start out with patients that have papillary high grade tumors and then patients that have CIS and then combination patients. And you've done their most recent TURBT and feel like you've, you know, cleaned them out. Yeah. So I think as you sort of alluded to, I, I, I do sort of give like a stage specific or disease specific sort of estimate based off, you know, the, the data, at least the way that I interpret it. So someone who has say high grade T1, you know, multifocal disease with diffuse CIS, like those patients, I sort of counsel and emphasize that there's a little bit of concern depending on whether or not you're worried about potential clinical understaging, potentially, even if you're doing it yourself, et cetera, you know, those patients all counsel like the chance that they would derive clinical benefit from BCG may be as low as 50% sometimes. And, you know, certainly that's an opportunity for clinical trials of BCG plus, you know, additional agent, maybe like an immune checkpoint inhibitor in that case, if they have early invasive changes, et cetera. But for a patient with papillary high grade TA only disease, you know, those patients chances of response, I typically quote them as at least 80% or so. And those that don't initially respond may be able to be rechallenged with a second induction course, or again, a clinical trial opportunity. So those patients may still derive clinical benefit from BCG that can be long lasting. I do counsel patients though, that even if they have an initial response, even with maintenance BCG, there's still a chance that they could recur. Typically I say somewhere around 20 to 30% chance within the first few years. Again, I sort of try to individualize it a little bit more patients with multifocal disease, even if it's high grade TA I worry more about those patients with larger tumor burden overall, even if, you know, they're fully resected using enhanced cystoscopy techniques, et cetera, compared to a patient, you know, a small solitary tumor, I think kind of risk stratified my estimates to them. Yeah, that sounds about spot on or consistent with what I do. You know, if it's kind of the favorable and, you know, solitary TA, high grade, less than three centimeters kind of in that 80% range, you know, now you're getting on the other end of the spectrum, T1 high grade. I mean, usually if they have LVI, I'm super worried, but if it's, you know, T1 high grade and not chock full, unresectable, early cystectomy candidate, closer to about 